The UN Secretary General appealed to Sudan's warring factions to observe a three-day ceasefire over the Muslim Eid al-Fitr holiday on Thursday. The fighting must stop immediately. I am deeply concerned about the terrible toll on civilians, the appalling humanitarian situation, and the horrifying prospects of further escalation. It comes as rival forces battled for a sixth day. Sudan Army Chief General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan also received separate calls from the United States, Saudi and Qatari foreign ministers, and Turkey's president, according to a statement. Gunfire could be heard in Khartoum, where the fiercest battles are being fought, as thousands of civilians try to flee. The violent power struggle has killed hundreds so far, and is tipping a nation reliant on food aid into what the United Nations calls a humanitarian catastrophe. The United States said it was sending more troops to the region in the event that it decided to evacuate its embassy in Khartoum. White House spokesperson John Kirby said President Joe Biden was following the situation closely. He authorized the military to move forward with pre-positioning forces um, and, and to develop options in case, and I want to stress right now, in case there's a need for an evacuation. The violence that erupted last weekend was triggered by a disagreement over an internationally backed plan to form a new civilian government. Both the RSF and Sudan's military accused the other of thwarting the transition. The US and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.